Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex, and I'm here bringing you the best board games coming to retail in the month of February. The holidays are over, and retail releases are starting to pick back up, uh, which is very exciting. Not exciting? The global shipping industry. Still a mess. Still a problem. Still frustrating. Everybody's upset. Nobody's happy about it. So hopefully all of these actually do come out, but that is the plan. They are supposed to come out. These are the best games coming to retail in February. Burr, burr, burr. 25th Century Games is releasing Three Sisters. This is a roll and write game uh, about backyard farming. I feel like there's a lot of games that are coming out about farming and gardening and things like that uh, because, you know, everybody kind of learned to do that during the pandemic, huh? You have to stay at home and pick up new hobbies? Gardening. That was one of the main hobbies people picked up in the last two years, so now we're seeing a lot of uh, board games about that. Now, Three Sisters is a, a roll and write, but it is one of the more strategic roll and writes. You know, it's a, it's a little bit heavier. It's not heavy, I wouldn't call it that, but it's a little bit heavier in the roll and write genre. So if you want a strategic roll and write, then check out Three Sisters. You'll be uh, gardening corn, beans, and pumpkins, which, you know, I like eating all of those. So I, I'm on board with that. Could, could we... Maybe you can play Three Sisters while you're growing those crops. I think you should grow those crops, play Three Sisters while eating those things. Huh? That sounds pretty meta. AEG is releasing Dog Lover uh, this month. And Dog Lover is a sequel to their popular game, Cat Lady, that came out uh, a few years ago. And, you know, maybe these two games are going to answer the age-old question... What's better, dogs or cats? Play both of these games. Which game is better? That will decide whether dogs or cats are better. So uh, in Dog Lover, you're going to be rescuing dogs. You're going to be training them, teaching them new tricks. You're going to be cherishing their unique traits. The artwork is very adorable. Uh, and it's a, it looks like a nice, fun game. It, it includes card drafting and set collection. Uh, and all of those things that you're doing are related to dogs. And I love dogs, so I think I'll probably love Dog Lover. Really? A game called Dog Lover is meant for dog lovers? Ho ho! Who would have thought? Capstone Games is releasing two games to retail this month. One of them, Ark Nova. Uh, this game's got a lot of hype. You probably have already heard about it. Ark Nova is a fairly heavy, complex game uh, that, you know, involves... Card drafting, hand management, set collection, tile placement, a ton of different things in this game. A lot going on in this game. Uh, but in, in the game, you are trying to plan, design, uh, and manage a zoo. You're trying to make, make the best zoo. Uh, and in that, you're going to be building enclosures, you're going to be accommodating animals, you're going to be supporting conservation projects. Now, one of the things to note about this game, yes, it came out to retail in February, but the first printing is already sold out. It came out at the beginning of this month, and it is already sold out. So, why did I include it into this video? Well, I included it because it did come out this month, and they've already announced a second printing of it. So, if you really want this game, you can... Uh, pre-order the second printing right now and they plan to uh, bring it to the USA and Canada in March 2022 so not very long away so first printing already sold out but you can get a new printing soon if you like big complex euro games then this one you know a uh, bunch of reviewers have put it on their top game lists and things like that so so if you like that style of game then I think this is definitely one to check out. Um, uh, the, Capstone Games is also releasing to retail Boone Lake, uh, and Boone Lake is another fairly complex Euro game. Uh, this one is notable because it's from the famous designer Alexander Fif Fister, Alexander Pfister, but pronounced Alexander Fister. Uh, Alexander Fister designed Games like Maracaibo, Cloud Age, Great Western Trail, Mombasa, lots of very popular games in the 
uh, complex Euro genre. And in Boone Lake, uh, you are trying to uh, build houses, settlements, raise cattle, produce raw materials, develop an infrastructure. Essentially, you're trying to improve your life. You have nothing and you're trying to make nothing. Can you succeed in improving your life and the life of your group and your community? Well, I don't know. Can you do that? It's tough to do that in real life. Can you do it in a game? I hope so, because I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. You can do it. You can improve the lives of yourself and everybody around you if you play Boone Lake. Uh, just came out to retail. All right. Elf Creek Games is releasing to retail Merchants of the Dark Road. And this one has gotten a lot of hype uh, for a while. The Kickstarter was huge. Elf Creek Games is known for their production value. Oh boy, do they have good production value. Everything looks amazing. Everything looks beautiful. Everything is gorgeous. That, that ice cream truck is excited. They heard me talking about Elf Creek's games, Merchant of the Dark Road, and they came coming and they were like, you want to trade? You want to trade Merchants of the Dark Road for some ice cream? Okay. Uh, but in the game, uh, this is another game that has a lot going on, a lot of different mechanics mixed into it. It's got dice rolling, it's got uh, pick up and deliver, it's got a rondelle, it's got set collection, uh, it's got worker placement with dice. Um, the theme of the game is that you are trying to brave the peril of the dark road traveling between cities to earn fame and fortune. And I love that theme. I have watched uh, a few games, uh, a few videos about the game, and from what it seems like, people are like, love the theme. The theme only partially comes through in the gameplay. But you know what? It looks so cool, I might not even care. I'm excited to play this one, all right? Because, and I, I've liked other games that Elf Creek ha has done, and you know, Sometimes there's something to be said for just a game that looks amazing on the table when you're like, oh boy, that just makes me feel fuzzy inside. Oh, I love the look. And I think Merchants of the Dark Road really fulfills that. Free League Publishing uh, is releasing to retail Tales from the Loop, the board game. And this is, this is a board game, but it kind of mixes RPG elements into it. You know, the, the dice point action system and things like that. In the game, you are solving mysteries as kids in a strange world set in the 1980s that never was. So, you know, Stranger Things? Kind of like Stranger Things? Do you like Stranger Things? Then maybe you're going to like Tales from the Loop, you know? Kids, Strange Things, 1980s. That is all of Stranger Things. That is exactly Stranger Things. Uh, each day starts at school, but as soon as the bell rings, you can use whatever time you have before dinner and homework to go exploring. So it's a fairly open system, and you're just exploring, trying to figure out what's going on, what's going weird. Uh, so, yeah. And another thing that sounds cool is players' actions are integrated, so there's no downtime but as you wait for others taking turns. You're all doing stuff at the same time, kind of. So that is Tales from the Loop. Funko Games, in conjunction with Prospero Hall, is releasing The Warriors Come Out to Play. So this is a game based on... If, if you know anything about Funko Games, they do a lot of games that are based on popular IPs. Things like The Goonies or Back to the Future, stuff like that. Well, this is, um, you know, this is a game version of a uh, 70s cult classic film called The Warriors, which I have never heard of. Uh, so that's an interesting choice. Um, I Maybe it's very popular. Um, you know, it ain't The Goonies. Everybody knows The Goonies. Not everybody knows The Warriors, but... You know, they're pretty good at making fun games regardless of the IP, you know? So even if you don't know the IP, the games are usually pretty solid. So I'm hoping that's what this one is. This is a cooperative game uh, where basically you are playing as one gang and you are trying to fight against and escape other gangs because you've been framed and you're trying to escape the other gangs until you can prove that you didn't uh, do, uh, you know, you didn't murder 
the leader of a, a powerful rival gang. It wasn't you. You didn't do it. You're not murderers. You're just thugs. You're a gang of thugs. But, you know, we got to draw the line somewhere. We, we steal and we beat up, but there's no murder in the Warriors, okay? We have no place for that. Uh, so the game ends if all the warriors uh, escape out of Coney Island. So if you like uh, cooperative games uh, that are based on, uh, you know, intellectual properties, then check out the warriors. All right. We have Greenbrier Games is releasing Lost Ones. And this is an adventure storytelling game. It uses a, a kind of a choose-your-own-path system, which is pretty fun. I used to love those choose-your-own-adventure books when I was a kid, so there's not enough choose-your-own-adventure board games, but this is one of them. You're going to be exploring different tiles, so a tile will come up, and then you can kind of go whichever way you want to, and the story will lead you in different directions depending on what you choose and new tiles will get revealed depending on where you go and stuff like that so you know it, it's got that a bit of a open sandbox feel because there's no restrictions on where you can go you're just going and exploring and, and trying to figure out some stuff the theme of the game is that you're stuck in this fantasy world you don't know how you got there and you're trying to figure out how to get home so you're exploring to try to get out of the fantasy world. You're trying to get out of the magical realm of dreams. Um, you know, I don't know why you want to escape the magical realm of dreams. That sounds pretty awesome. Way better than real life. But apparently, you know, you miss your dog and you're trying to get home. All right? Could you have a, a magical flying dog in the world of dreams? Oh, <laughs> you betcha. But that ain't good enough. You want the real thing. You're trying to get home. So, if you like uh, choose-your-own-adventure storytelling games, then check out Lost Ones. Colossal Games is releasing Reload. This is a skirmish battle game using dice. And that's always pretty fun. I love me some skirmish games. So, uh, in the game, they, they do have a, um, a unique dice system in this game. You'll be rolling dice, allocating them to do different things, but then, depending on what you choose and what you do, then your dice lineup gets paired against somebody else's dice lineup, and that determines who wins combat. So, like, your better actions take lower number dice, which gets you a good action, but then the lower number dice might lose in combat. So, it's an interesting system of, like, what do you want to go for? Um, this is a, uh, two to four player game and, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a skirmish game and it's kind of got a, a fun, interesting theme. Uh, you, it's a, it's a battle royale where you're trying to trade, but it's also being televised. So you're trying to like have some flair and get some popularity points. You're trying to, you're trying to win battles, but you're also trying to like do it in a cool way for the TV audience. And I think that's kind of a, a fun, silly uh, take on this kind of skirmish theme. Uh, so there you go. That's Reload from Colossal Games. Nauvoo Games is releasing Pinpoint. Now this is actually a three-in-one party game. You get three games in one box. So hey, have you ever bought a game and been like, I want more in my box? Well, you know, in Pinpoint, you get three games in there. And you're like, no, but I want four. Well, you can't have four, okay? There's three in this game. You only get three. The different games are, um, it's using a, a deck of cards with different numbers on them, and you're playing with that in different ways. So there's a game called One to a Hundred, and in that game, someone's giving a clue uh, of uh, comparing two extremes, you know, like... Uh, weaker, stronger, and then you're giving a clue based on a number and people are trying to guess the specific number for your clue between 1 and 100. It's sort of like Wavelength, if you've ever played Wavelength, but it's Wavelength just with like cards instead of that big contraption that they have. There's also a game called 1 to 10, and in this mode, uh, teams of two players answer questions on a scale of 1 to 10 and win by answering the most similarly. And then there's a game called Least Most, 
Uh, and this is, you vote which person or famous character is least or most likely to do something. So if you consistently pick the most popular answers, you win. So, you know, definitely a party game, social game, a lot of talking in the game. Uh, but three different ways to play it in the box. So that's kind of cool. That's Pinpoint from Navu Games. Oink Games, which is known for making fairly small box games, is releasing another small box game to retail. This one is called Scout. Uh, and this is a, a retail release. This game came out a couple of years ago, I believe, in Japan. But this is uh, the first retail release in North America. So if you're in North America, which is where I am, which is why I cover, you know, North America in this video, uh, then check out Scat Scout. Scout is a ladder climbing game where you're trying to play cards in ascending order, but it has a unique card system. Every card has a number both on the top and the bottom, different numbers, and you can rotate the cards either way to use it as either point value. But you have to decide which way you want to play your hand at the beginning of the round. You get your cards and you're like, do I want to play it this way or do I want to flip it over and play these cards? And so you have to play your, it's a little bit like trick taking, like someone plays a card down and then you have to play a higher card than that, or someone plays two cards and you have to play two cards higher than that. Uh, so it feels, you know, reminiscent of a classic card game, but it's got fun, vibrant art on the cards, you know, really bright colored cards, uh, and that interesting, unique take on it with the double-sided numbers on the cards. So if you want an accessible card game, small box that you can teach to anybody and kind of take anywhere, then Scout looks like a fun, new, refreshing take on card games. Resonim is releasing Phantom Inc. And this is another party game. This is a game for four to eight players. So if you have a larger group, this would be a good game for you. And it is a, uh, a word game. So, you know, I, I enjoy uh, word type of party games, you know, code names to crypto, things like that. And this sort of looks like it fits into the same similar family of those sort of word uh, party games. So in Phantom Inc., you split the, uh, the group into two teams and you play on teams and you have a, an object and you're trying to get your teammates to guess that object, but you do it by answering cards. So, you know, if the object was, let's say, banana, your teammates can pick any question card that they have in their hand and you're going to slowly start to answer it on a board, the other team can see your answer, but once your teammates think they know the answer, they can tell you to stop. And the other team doesn't get to see the question card, so they don't know what you ha are writing. You know, so if you, if, if the object is banana and your teammates give you the question card, you know, what color is it? Well, I'm gonna write Y, E, and then my teammates are gonna go stop, you know, and they're gonna know that what I'm referring to is Yellow, they don't know it's banana yet, but they know yellow because yellow is a color that starts with Y. I mean, if, if they weren't slow, they would have probably said stop after the Y. There's no other colors that are yellow besides Y, uh, you know. So, but then the other team gets to see, okay, there's something with a Y dealing with this object. And then you continue to give clues and the ghost, the person who is the uh, person answering the questions, you know, they write slowly so that a teammate can try to figure out what it is. And eventually, it's the first team to figure out what the uh, object is wins the game. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes to play. So you just play a bunch of different rounds of it and have a good time guessing hidden things. So that is Phantom Inc. from Resonim. Red Raven Games is releasing to retail now or never. This is the third game in a series of games. I don't think the game, the games aren't really like sequels to each other, but they're all set in the same world, okay? They're all set in the same universe. Uh, I forget what that world is named. Uh, it is 
Arzium. Arzium is the world. So this is uh, the third in the series. The first one was Above and Below, then there was Near and Far, and now this is Now or Never, because all of them have to have uh, three words in the title. You know, it has to be something and or something else. So this one happens to be Now or Never. Uh, so in this game, this is a, uh, a decently complex game, and I like these games because they have a storytelling element to them, which is, it kind of elevates it over, over other games in the genre, sets it apart a little bit. You know, it's not just Near and Far was a worker placement game, but it wasn't just a worker placement game, it was a worker placement game that has a storytelling aspect to it, and you don't see that as much. This, Now or Never, is not a worker placement game. Instead, this game, uh, you get to have one of four asymmetrical characters, and you are trying to rebuild a village so that returning villagers have a place to live. You have to carefully choose what and where to build to maintain an advantage, earning the biggest rewards for long-term planning. There's combat in this game, and I've heard the combat system is really, really clean and simple and fun and unique. So that's one of the best parts of this game is the combat system. You know, and it also has action drafting, hand management, tile placement, things like that. So if you've played either of the other games uh, in this series, well, I mean, you gotta complete the trilogy, right? Who doesn't watch the third one in a trilogy of movies? This is the trilogy of games, and this is the third one, so check it out. And then the other thing that's cool is you can play this game either in standard mode or storytelling mode. So if you don't want to go through all the story, you can just play a scenario and have it as a standalone. There's a way to do that in this game. So it's nice to have that flexibility and ability to choose how you want to play it. The Op is releasing Mountains Out of Mole Hills. This is a game that has a three-dimensional board, which is pretty cool. There's a, there's a bottom layer and a top layer, and you are playing as moles, literally as moles, moving around the bottom layer, and as you're doing that, you are pushing dirt up into the top area. You know, just like a mole does, where you see a mole digging, and then all of a sudden there's a little trail going along the surface, uh, and so then you are placing these dirt uh, I don't know, token, they're, they're little pieces. You're placing these dirt pieces on the top layer and people can move around and as you make uh, the mountains, you're making little mole, you know, mole hills into mountains, they can topple over and stuff like that because they can only be a certain height. And so it's got this fun three-dimensional aspect of it. And one of the interesting things is you score for the mole hills that you have control of and you have control of it by having the bottom piece. So every time something moves under a molehill, you know, a piece goes onto the bottom and makes it higher, and now you have control of that. So it's all about playing cards, movement, and then adding your pieces. So if you want like a, a you know, a fun three-dimensional game like that, then that one looks pretty cool. Uh, it is a, uh, what is it? It's a two to four player game, takes 45 to 60 minutes, and is, a uh, you know, appropriate for nine plus. So it looks, it does look like a family style game, like a welcoming game. So check that out. That is Mountains Out of Mole Hills from the Op. Unexpected Games uh, is releasing a new game. They had a, a very popular game uh, uh, last year called The Initiative, and this is their their next game, I guess, um, and it is called Voices in My Head, and this is definitely a unique, interesting theme. So in Voices in My Head, it is a courtroom game. It is a trial that is happening, but the difference is one person plays as the, the uh, prosecutor trying to convict the defendant guy and everybody else plays as voices in guy's head so you might be things like honesty or selfishness or stuff like that you're playing as qualities trying to influence the defendant guy so you know maybe honesty wants you to be honest you're gonna go to prison but you know you'll have kept your integrity after you rob that bank uh, whereas you know selfishness is like no blame it on somebody else 
Uh, and so to win the game, each player has to achieve their hidden objective. You have a hidden objective that you are going for. Uh, so, you know, it's a one versus many game, but it's kind of fun to play. You know, it's almost like the adult version of the Disney movie Inside Out. You know, these are the voices in the head, but you a bad man and you did bad things. And now are you going to come clean about it? We'll see. Voices in my head from Unexpected Games. Weird Giraffe Games is releasing later this month. Studies in Sorcery. This is a card drafting engine building game. And I like uh, the theme of it. The theme of it is that you are trying to earn your d degree in the dark arts. You know, kind of like Harry Potter, right? I mean, Harry Potter didn't try to earn his degree in the dark arts. He tried to fight it. But you, know, you get the analogy. You're doing sorcery stuff. And Harry Potter is the main thing I think of when I think of sorcery. You know? It's just, you know, those movies and books were too good. It's always going to be in my head when I think of that. So, I also like the game because it's a fairly small box game as an engine builder. You know, it's all played with cards. You're trying to get different ingredients that can help you finish different things that are going to help you get different degrees, stuff like that. And as you finish, uh, you know, projects, those projects are going to get you special abilities that are going to help you more and more as the game goes on. That's the engine building aspect of it. I finished this project, project, now this helps me with this ingredient for another project, makes that easier to get. Now that I finished that project, that gets me another thing, and I'm going to have so many special abilities by the end. So if you want a small box uh, engine building game, then check out Studies in Sorcery from Weird Draft Games. So those are all the, uh, the new games I have coming out uh, to retail this month, but I do want to mention two other ones. Uh, one is uh, Daily Magic Games is doing a new edition of Valeria Card Kingdoms. They have the second edition just came out to retail. And Valeria Card, the Valeria Car, uh, the Valeria world is fairly robust uh, from Daily Magic Games. They have a bunch of different games that are kind of set in this Valeria world. And Valeria Card Kingdoms is a, a game where you're doing tableau building. You're trying to build, uh, you're trying to get uh, citizens into your, uh, I don't know, village or something like that. Uh, yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying to build a tableau of loyal citizens. Um, but the new edition uh, has a lower MSRP than the original one did, so you can get it for cheaper. Uh, it has a new system of tracker boards, tokens, uh, plus 10 markers to count resources. Uh, it's got a new set of monster-based event cards that were not part of the original game. So if you like, I think Valeria, their, their games in the Valeria world do a pretty good job of being small games with a decent amount of strategy in them. You know, they're, they're games that I can travel with but still feel bigger than they are on the table. And I like that about them. So if you want an updated version or if you want to jump into the Valeria card uh, system world uh, for the first time, then check out Valeria Card Kingdom's new edition, second edition. And lastly, uh, I also, I don't mention a ton of uh, expansions on this because this video is more about the new games coming out to retail, but every once in a while I like to, uh, you know, shout out an expansion that I'm excited for for a base game that I really like. So, uh, Tapestry from Stonemeyer Games is getting its second expansion called Arts and Architecture. That is coming out this month. And in this expansion, you can choose from a variety of new capital city mats, a new advancement track featuring new types of cards and tiles, plus more civilizations, tapestry cards, tech cards, landmark cards, miniatures, lots of great stuff to keep the experience of tapestry, tapestry fresh and new. So if you like Tapestry, the new expansion just came out. And I do like Tapestry, so I'm going to like this. All right, well, that's what I got for you. I do these videos every single month. I reach out to publishers uh, to find out what they have uh, coming out. So this is the sort of best available knowledge that I have that's coming straight from publishers uh, when they think things are going to be released. Uh, and I will keep doing this every month. Thank you for checking out. I hope this helps you find a game you're really excited about to play right now because you don't have to wait 18 months for these. That's the best news you've heard all day. Yes. 
So, best games coming to retail in February. Thanks for checking it out. Bye.